reading as much as I usually do, but I am still reading and I'm mostly reading classics. So I'm hoping that this will be a very um, successful October for me. Victim Nation. I'm Sam here again with A Bear and a Bee Books. And today I wanted to share with you my very extremely overly ambitious, not gonna happen, TBR. But I can't help it. I get so excited and I have so many Victober books on my shelf. And I really, if I say I'm gonna read something, I have a hard time sticking to it. I have a few books picked out for the challenges. But, you know, I reserve the right to fit other ones in as I go. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, first, I have to thank the hosts. I absolutely love this readathon. I have to thank Kate Howe and Katie from Books and Things and Lucy from Lucy the Reader. I just love this readathon and I look forward to it every year. So let's talk about the challenges. Kate's challenge was to read a sensation novel. So I have um, two options here in my stack of books. I probably have, no, nope, wait, wait, at least three options here in my stack of books. So um, I have uh, East Lynn by Alan Wood, No Name by Wilkie Collins, and Lady Audley Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. And now I know there's like the pillars of the sensation novel and I believe that these two are part of that so I should probably give one of these a try but the synopsis for this one is really pulling me in um, this one is basically about two sisters who find that um, all of a sudden they're illegitimate and they're not going to inherit and how are they gonna live after that and one takes the high road and one takes another road <laughs> um, but anyway yeah it just sounds really interesting to me it's something that um, really appeals to me and I love these covers this is the vintage red spine editions and I love these like like illustrated covers they're just so beautiful um, they have, I think, three other of Collins' novels um, done in this style, and I would love to collect them all. They're just beautiful. It is a chunker, though. <laughs> but then again, so is the East Lynn. So we'll see. I've heard great things about all of these. Um, I've heard this one involves, I believe, death and murder. So that's good. Um, or not. <laughs> And this one, of course, Lady Only. She's got a secret. What is it? I don't know. I want to find out. And um, I really don't like to read the backs of classics, so that's why I don't have a huge synopsis of these, But because um, there's tons of spoilers on classics. But yeah, I've heard great things about all of these, and they definitely would fit the prompt for Kate's challenge. Next is Katie's challenge, which is to read a book set in the city, or a book set in the country, or one of each, or both. Um, so yeah, so I love this challenge, actually. I grew up in like a real country setting as a child, so um, I love to read books about the country because they remind me of my childhood and they make me feel all warm and cozy. Um, it is my personal goal in life to be able to have a property again on land that I own that I can, you know, grow vegetables and just enjoy nature. Um, I personally take a lot out of um, natural beauty and it's healing and God's blessing and that. So that's just a personal desire to me. So maybe that's why I love Thomas Hardy. I read Far From the Maddening Crowd during a different Victober and absolutely loved it one of my favorite books now. So I wanted to continue my journey with Hardy and I've selected The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy. Now I've heard that this one has a really um, intriguing setting, that the setting is very powerful and that's one of the reasons I love Wuthering Heights so much. So I'm really excited to give this one a try and I hope that it's one I'm able to get to. And for the other side, for the city prompt, I wanted to try um, Geraldine Juiceberry, uh, The Half Sisters. And I know Katie really loves this book. She talks about it a lot. So I thought it would be perfect for her challenge. And um, I don't know specifically that this is set in a city, but I know that one of the sisters is an actress. So I figured she's an actress. She's gonna live in the city. 
makes sense, right? So we'll see how this goes, but um, this is basically about two sisters and they're half sisters and they don't know their sisters and it's about their different lives and um, yeah, I'm really excited to give this one a try. I read just like the first, I always read like sometimes the first couple of pages, the first paragraph, first sentence, when I get a new book or I'm interested in a new author and um, I just have a feeling this one's gonna be really good for me. So we'll see how I do. And finally, Lucy's challenge is to read a book with a female um, main character. And for this, I've selected Mary Chumley's Red Pottage. Now this, I had started a while ago and I was really enjoying it and I just never finished it. Um, I was reading it via um, ebook, like on my phone though. And I have a real challenge staying invested in ebooks. I don't know why, but when I have the physical book and I can look at the, you know, the cover art and just like the smell of the book, I don't know, maybe I'm weird, but it just helps keep me motivated to want to finish it because I own it and it's a part of my library. Um, so I'm hoping that I will be able to do that with this one. Um, and yeah, and I believe Lucy mentioned something about like the new woman, um, like trope that was being written. And this has a bit of that, I'm told. So I thought it would be a good fit for her challenge. This is basically about two friends and their journeys and where they end up and how life treats them. And I just, I really like that idea. And this was written at the very end of the Victorian period. So I think it'll be a little bit different than some of these other ones, which is always good to have some um, you know, variety in your reading choices. So I'm excited to try this one. And then next, um, the group challenge was to read a book that is a popular Victorian book. However you interpret that is up to you, whether it's popular then or it's popular now. Um, so anyway, so for that one, I've selected this. This is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. And I've been meaning to read him for a while. Um, this is Slim. I have this beautiful edition. And yeah, I'm really excited to get to this one. Plus, I'm feeling extra fall this year. Like I'm really into the whole vibe and aesthetic. And I really want to read some things that are gonna give me like that gothic creepy edge and I think that this might do that for me. And then the last challenge for Victober was to read something out loud and um, I, if I find a passage that's really powerful to me, I will typically share with my husband. So I'm hoping I will stumble across something like that. I recently collected these two editions. This is the poetry of Elizabeth Barrett Browning and this is by Sweetwater. And then um, I also have Robert and Elizabeth Barrett Browning, the Everyman's Library Pocket Poet Edition. So maybe I'll read some of this to him and see how that goes. Then I also have these two. Now this one I've already started reading. So I was hoping to finish this during Victober. Um, this is Hard Times by Charles Dickens. I am really enjoying this. Um, Charles Dickens and I have an interesting relationship. I've read a few of his short stories and enjoyed them. I've tried a couple of his novels before and I haven't been able to get through them, but I'm really enjoying this. Um, I think I struggle with books sometimes set in major cities and a lot of Dickens works are set in London, but this is a little bit different and I'm really enjoying it. So um, yeah, so I hope to finish this one. And then I also found this lovely edition of Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson and I will be by the sea. So I thought I might start this before October as just like my little um, seaside book. So we'll see how this goes. And if I end up finishing it before um, October, I'll let you know, or if I finish it during October, I'll put it in my wrap up. And um, yeah, so I'm hoping to really enjoy this as well. So the group book for Victober is going to be Elizabeth Gaskell's Gothic Tales. I don't know if I will get to read this whole thing, However, I have read out of here Lois the Witch before and loved it. Um, I am originally from New England, from Massachusetts specifically, and anything to do with the Salem witch trials really appeals to me, seeing as how I've been there in person and I grew up not too far from there. So, um, so I find that really fascinating. Um, I actually wouldn't mind to reread it, it just as time depending, see how that goes. But um, I may end up reading just a few um, short stories out of this. I've been meaning to read The Old Nurse's Story for a while and that is in here. Um, also, The Gray Woman has come up in like 
like my research of Elizabeth Gaskell before. So I am interested to read both of those. So we'll see how I go, but this is the group book and I'm so excited that my copy got here on time. Then I also, okay, so my family and I are huge Disney people and the Boo to You readathon is also going on. Um, I'll link the um, host's information for that below if you'd like to go check it out. But it's basically a readathon focusing on, um, you know, like the Boo to You celebration and the 50th um, anniversary of Disney World and um, it's also going to be my 10 year wedding anniversary and my husband and I went there for our honeymoon and of course we're going there to celebrate so yeah it just feels like I need to participate but anyway um, for that one I was able to fit this in so I was hoping to read this for both Victober and Boo to You and this is H.G. Wells The Island of Dr. Moreau and um, yeah I just I need to get some H.G. Wells. It's not super long. It sounds really interesting and intriguing and perfect for this time of year. Um, I know it's about a bunch of experiments on an island and that's all I know, that's all I wanna know. So hopefully um, this can count for both readathons. And then because I'm feeling spooky, I have this ghost story selection by Dickens and I'm really excited to give this a try. I love these little books. These are the, um, Macmillan Library Collector's Editions. I love them. They're pocket, they're fun, they're easy to read. Um, the print is a little small, but it's still definitely legible. And yeah, I'm just in the mood for some spookiness, which is odd for me, but um, yeah, it seems like a good time to give this a try. Then <laughs> I also have um, Oscar Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest, which is just a collection of his plays. I read two of these in a previous Victober, and I absolutely loved them. Um, I studied Oscar Wilde in school and I didn't super get on with his novel. I know, I know it's a lot of people's favorite, but I just, I don't know, it didn't, it didn't really chime with me back then. I plan on trying it again as an adult and seeing if it gels with me better this time. But yeah, but I absolutely love his plays and his shorter works. Um, I read, um, the Canterville Ghost, which I love. If you want to talk about my favorite short fiction, it's definitely in the list. That story is hysterical, and I think being an American, I find it even more funny. I don't know, but I highly recommend if you're looking for a not so scary ghost story for Victober. But anyway, yeah, I'm excited to give some more of these a try, and um, maybe I'll get to some plays this Victober. And finally, I have this. So, I love to read obscure titles. If you know anything about me or my channel, um, I'm always looking for stuff that I haven't really heard of or I don't know a lot about. And this is by Charles Reed, and this is called The Cloister and the Hearth. And um, yeah, I don't know a lot about this, but I was really intrigued in Reed and his writings. And this seems to be the most popular of his works that has survived. He seems to have also written some sensation novels, but this was the easiest one for me to get my hands on. And it's just beautiful. It's a work of art itself. Um, just, yes, please. I love old books. Um, but anyway, this is um, by the Heritage Press. And I think, Again, I don't like to know a lot about classics going in, but I think this is a historical fiction book written in the Victorian period, and I don't know a lot more than that, and I really don't want to. Um, it does get um, fairly good reviews on Goodreads, and it's just an author that I hadn't heard very much about and I want to learn. So because of that, I picked up one of his works, and maybe I'll give this chunker a try. We'll see <laughs> how it goes, but I wanted to share it and um, yeah, I'm just really excited to add this to my collection. So that is finally all the books I have for you. Um, I'm so excited. I love Victober. Thank you again to all the hosts. Um, if you watched my video, I really appreciate it. I just love this time of year and it just feels like classics are meant for fall and winter to me. I don't know, it just, it's the right time to read them and the right time to celebrate them together. So I'm so excited. Um, I hope that you all will be able to join us in Victober. And, um, oh, 
a quick recommendation. If you aren't used to reading Victorian literature, but you do want to join um, and you're looking for something short and sweet, I would highly recommend Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Um, it's a children's classic and I absolutely love it. It's full of whimsy and magic and I'm sure you know the outline of the story. So if you're not used to reading Victorian literature, I would definitely suggest it as a place to start. But I hope that you'll be able to join us for the readathon. I hope that you're all doing well. Thanks so much for being here with me today. Farewell for now. Bye-bye.